All right, I'm very excited to be presenting uh, to you all today, and thank you for attending my talk. Uh, as mentioned, I'm going to be discussing uh, our security analysis work on camera LiDAR fusion against some black box attacks on uh, self-driving cars. Uh, first, a little bit of information on why understanding the vulnerability perception is important. Um, as we probably all know, uh, autonomous vehicles rely on many sensors, and those sensors, in order to translate that data into meaningful uh, semantic information on the environment, rely on perception. Increasingly, perception is uh, is being based on deep neural network architectures to translate that massive volume of data into the semantic information. But as it has been discovered in a variety of prior works, perception using deep neural networks is vulnerable to a wide array of different attacks. The one we're going to discuss today uh, for our prior research is structured spoofing and injection attacks. Um, and we chose to focus on this because we believe the LiDAR point cloud and its associated algorithms uh, were underanalyzed in the security community. Um, similarly, we've found that it's not enough just to consider single instantaneous uh, detections of LiDAR data in your security analysis. Given that the complexity of the multi-module autonomous vehicles, it's very important to consider uh, a lot of different modules of the autonomous vehicle in conjunction with uh, longitudinal case studies. And finally, a lot of previous case studies, a lot of previous experiments in this, in this area have considered single sensor perception pipelines um, whereas increasingly many industry-level autonomous vehicles are using multi-sensor fusion. So a little bit of information before we start on the system and threat models that we're using. Um, for our attack model, we're using a LiDAR spoofing threat model where uh, an attacker places a roadside laser and a photodiode to be able to receive the victim LiDAR sensor's uh, laser beams, um, understand where it's coming from, process it through uh, a delay component, and shoot back laser beams as an adversary through an attack laser. The only knowledge that's required with this threat model is uh, line of sight information between the victim um, and, and the attacker uh, to be able to receive and transmit that signal. Um, and we're using a baseline established in prior works that uh, showed that a capability of up to 200 spoof points was stably achievable. Given this threat model, you can come up with a couple of different attacker designs. Um, the first, which has been proposed in, in a couple of prior works, was a naive attack, and we decide to evaluate the naive attack in a couple of new contexts in this work. Um, the definition of our naive attack is spoofing at frontier positions of the victim without any additional contextual information, and you can see that at the left with the goal of making the victim perform evasive maneuvers like emergency braking or, um, or obstacle avoidance unnecessarily. And the second attack, which we've discovered um, that I'll be presenting a lot in greater detail in the future, is um, spoofing relative to an existing car in the scene. And we call that, in this case, the frustum attack. And I will get into this. Like I mentioned, autonomous vehicles rely on a lot of different sensors. And I've, I've just put up a sample of those on the left. And in order to translate that information, uh, the sensor data is processed through a series of decision and control logic. In this work, we're going to focus on the LiDAR and the camera sensors, as those are some of the most common sensors used in industry-level autonomous vehicles. And in order to understand what's happening with that sensor data, we're going to look at the perception and the tracking modules. For um, static data sets, or for static evaluations and longitudinal case studies, we use the Kitty data set. And later on, I'll show we use the Beidou Apollo model with the SVL simulator. Um, to give a little bit more background on sensor fusion and how sensor fusion works in autonomous vehicles, um, specifically regarding the fusion of camera and LiDAR sensor data, you can break out sensor fusion into a couple of different subcategories, one of which is semantic level fusion, um, which takes the sensor data individually and processes those either in series or independently to get the semantic information and then performs the fusion at more of a semantic level um, of the pipeline. And that's in contrast to feature-level fusion, which takes a different approach of ingesting that camera and LiDAR data into one centralized perception and fusion algorithm to output semantic information at the output of that. Um, a couple of key reasons why sensor fusion is very important for autonomous driving. One is for increased robustness and redundancy. Um, it's thought that sensor fusion can mitigate vulnerabilities and performance degradations versus a single sensor alone. Second is reduced model complexity, particularly regarding semantic level fusion, to reduce, to reduce the amount of data volume that's being processed. And third is, of course, with more data comes the opportunity, but not the guarantee, to get improved performance of the perception. So um, pairing these together a little bit, how we take our threat model in the, in the autonomous vehicle model and do evaluations, we, take, we capture a couple of outcomes. 
uh, one of which is false positive, which we're particularly interested in, and another are false negative outcomes, and the simultaneous instances of false positives and false negatives we call translation outcomes. In order to ascertain the effect of our attacks on the outcomes and make sure that any outcomes that we observe are directly related to the attacks, uh, we take a pretty straightforward approach where we run a baseline case in our analysis of running uh, unattacked data through perception to get baseline performance and then running the attacked, um, attacked uh, data through the perception and comparing the results. So with that in mind, um, I'm going to discuss how we evaluated the, the naive attacks in new contexts and how we looked at a couple of existing defenses against naive attacks. Uh, we really performed um, an incredibly extensive analysis of naive attacks. Um, and I'm not going to get into all of the details in this particular slide, but I did want to um, highlight one particular case. Uh, we discovered that, um, or, or we validated the fact that naive attacks are devastating against LiDAR-based uh, perception. Here, each of the different lines represents a different LiDAR-based perception algorithm, and the x-axis represents the number of spoof points, and the y-axis represents the attack success rate that we're able to get uh, using the naive uh, spoofing model. And as you would expect, undefended LiDAR-based perception is incredibly vulnerable to these uh, naive spoofing attacks. Um, prior works had only analyzed naive spoofing at a close ranges, so around eight meters away from the autonomous vehicle, and we extended that analysis to more of a medium and long-range context, where we're looking at around 30 meters away from the autonomous vehicle, we're injecting those spoof, uh, spoof point clusters, and defining attack success rate is getting a false positive detection. One of the most popular defenses against LiDAR-based spoofing is this defense um, called CARLO, and that was shown to guard perception against uh, close-range attacks using some physics-based assumptions about how vehicles should appear in a natural environment. Uh, by extending this analysis of naive attacks out to medium range, we were actually able to show that the CARLO defense does not perform as well at medium range as it does at close range. And as you can see, the, the attack success rate is nearly as high at uh, medium range as it is at the close range. And so you might be asking, why is this important? Why is it important that Carlo works uh, at close range but not at medium range? Um, and that's because if an attacker initiated an attack over a longitudinal sequence starting at medium range, um, they would be able to create um, a scenario that the autonomous uh, vehicle, the victim vehicle, could think is dangerous. So here we've shown that there's an existing uh, true object on the left, and we've spoofed an object on the right at 40 meters. And um, over time, we've spoofed that that object is getting closer to the victim vehicle here at 30 meters, here at 20 meters, and it's not until when the victim, or when the spoofed object is at 10 meters is the Carlo defense able to recognize, based on its physics-based assumptions, that this vehicle is actually fake. So if you were to rely on this defense, over time, the attacker could create longitudinal circumstances um, that even after only a couple of frames, the, the victim vehicle would think that there was a dangerous situation and would have to perform evasive maneuvers, emergency braking. Um, so instead, one of the contributions of our work was to uh, study for the first time uh, through extensive evaluation, sensor fusion as a possible defense against the naive attack. And what we found is that, in general, camera ladder fusion is better suited, especially at medium ranges, at guarding against these types of attacks. And even the worst performing fusion algorithm on the right is on par or better than the Carlo defense at medium range. And in fact, for us in PointNet and ConvNet, two of our perception algorithms, almost completely eliminate the effects of naive attacks. So that's a really uh, one, one motivation, one benefit of using sensor fusion to guard, against, uh, to guard LiDAR based perception against spoofing attacks. Um, but what I want to get into now is that um, actually camera LiDAR fusion is not actually a silver bullet against uh, LiDAR, LiDAR attacks. And what we discovered is that there's this novel context-aware attack, which we call the frustum attack, that's able to compromise an intrinsic camera LiDAR vulnerability. A little bit of information on what a frustum is. So a frustum is defined, in our case especially, by a 2D bounding box extended or extruded out into three dimensions. So in the bottom right, you can see there's a camera, and any, uh, a camera is only able to resolve angles only in the 3D space. So it's a two-dimensional projection of the 3D world. Um, given that, you can see in the top left, if there's a bounding box in the camera image, if you were to try to extend where that is out into three dimensions, 
um, there's, a, there's uncertainty along that range axis. And that shape that's created by extruding the two-dimensional box into 3D is called a frustum. And because of this inherent uncertainty of the range dimension, we hypothesize two potential vulnerabilities of camera LiDAR uh, fusion. One is the frustum vulnerability, um, and that's due to the fact that the, the 3D space in front or behind an existing target vehicle is consistent. So if you were able to move that car within uh, that frustum, when you project that information back to the 2D plane, it would still be consistent with the two-dimensional information, even though the range has changed. And the second vulnerability of this, um, of this approach is that in 3D, an object will create a shadow region, particularly with the LiDAR point cloud. And you can see that shadow region in subfigure C there, where no LiDAR points exist. So our frustum attack is able to leverage both of these potential vulnerabilities, which I'll uh, describe and hopefully become more intuitive. Our first experiment was to show that this frustum attack is feasible in a physical sense. So we created a physical experiment where we placed a spoofing device behind a target car and in front of uh, a victim. You can see the setup in the left. And we're able to stably spoof points in the frustum. And I've here I've outlined, hopefully you can see, um, uh, our spoof point cluster behind a target car. So here's just a short video that's just showing that in certain cases the frustum attack is feasible without any additional knowledge. Again, the attacker here has no knowledge of anything about the camera. Um, so the attack is context aware in terms of it needs information from the scene, but it doesn't actually require information on the camera. Once we introduce perception into the equation, we find that the frustum attack is particularly devastating. So here we have a camera image in the top left. Um, that's unperturbed, but in the bottom right, we've injected a cluster of spoof points behind a target object in the bracketed red. And once we introduce perception into the equation, we're able to get uh, consistently false positive detections behind that target car, even with a camera LiDAR fusion algorithm. Once again, we really performed extensive analysis on the frustum attack. We evaluated it on LiDAR-only perception, and we also evaluated it on camera LiDAR fusion perception to the effect of showing that uh, many classes of perception are vulnerable to this frustum attack. Specifically, highlighting just one case, um, the x-axis represents where we put those uh, spoof points relative to the target car, and each of the, the y-axis represents the attack success rate. Each of the different lines represents the number of the attack, or, excuse me, the number of attack points that we injected. And here you can see pretty clearly that there's an attack success rate peak both in front and behind the car, which makes a little bit of intuitive sense. Finally, um, my last technical slide here is that we did an evaluation of uh, the frustum attack on longitudinal circumstances using multi-frame tracking and motion object prediction. In this first case, we were able to show that um, injecting spoof point clusters in increasingly closer distances, so starting farther away and moving closer over longitudinal time points, is able to create uh, an accepted track of an adversarial object. Um, that if you predict that motion into the time just a couple of seconds later, it appears as if uh, this uh, adversarial object is on a crash course for a collision with the victim, so the victim will have to perform some evasive maneuvers. Similarly, we're able to do the opposite, where we take an existing object and we increasingly put uh, spoof points at further distances to make it appear as if this object is traveling away, which can compromise adaptive cruise control and uh, path planning. And I encourage you to uh, consult our paper in this last one, but we also did an evaluation of industry-grade autonomous vehicles to show that even uh, these high-fidelity models are vulnerable to the frustum attack. In summary, just a couple of our contributions. Uh, we showed that prior defenses against LiDAR spoofing can fail under certain circumstances, that naive LiDAR attacks can be defended by camera LiDAR fusion um, pretty robustly. Um, however, these LiDAR fusion algorithms are not a silver bullet and that they're vulnerable to a frustum attack, which is feasible, uh, in the real world and over longitudinal circumstances can cause devastating outcomes. Um, thanks for listening, and uh, I will take any questions that anybody has.